I mean this in the most affectionate way. This is a motley crew. <laughs> God, this is great. I, I can just feel the creative dynamism just in your presence. This is exactly what we want. All right, so we got some things to announce that are, I think for just about everybody here, not exactly news, but, but it's, this makes it official. So here we are, and, and it's been a long time in coming. So let me, uh, let me set the stage a, a little bit. Um, so we spend, um, obviously, a great deal of our time and, and energy and resources in our city um, focused on what's going to make life in New Bedford better. And, relatedly, how are we going to be more competitive economically? Because those two goals are, are inextricably uh, related. And, you know, the, we, and we focus, obviously, on the things that, that we do well, and which is necessary. And we focus on, you know, among other things, the, 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 you know, the port and the industries that are there. And we double down on that. And we look at our neighborhoods and think about ways in which our neighborhoods can be strengthened, both economically as well as uh, culturally in, in terms of its quality of life. Um, you know, manufacturing we do very well and we've put a lot of effort into that. Um, but, you know, when we, when we think about arts and culture, um, you know, we're, we're thinking at once about a, uh, a way that a lot of cities have, have um, uh, a, a, mean, a means of, uh, of economic development that many cities have embraced, right? So it's almost, you know, since Richard Florida wrote about you know, the creative class, you know, whatever it was, 15 years ago. Um, you know, cities have, have seized on the idea that, you know, um, uh, capital is mobile, and if you create a nice place, then, then, uh, then investment will follow, and jobs will follow, and so forth. And there's a certain truth to that, but as we all know, as we've made, uh, you have discussed, both with me and, and with your colleagues, that, that that theory has its limitations, right? Because sometimes it's hard, you know, to, um, to make a place that isn't creative, creative. Um, what's different about us is that's not the case. I mean, this New Bedford's one of New Bedford's greatest strengths, not just in 2018, but in 18, going all the way back to 1818, is that it is a it is it is a creative place. It is a place that has reinvented itself. It is a place that is uh, cherishes its history, but is always looking forward. And um, when it comes to economic development, the the art scene. Um, and our artistic and cultural assets have been staring us in the face. And so, you know, we've had many discussions over, over time, both, you know, among those of us who practice the uh, economic development policy as well as, um, you know, folks in the, the myriad arts communities and folks in uh, the other cultural sectors about, like, how do we, how do we accentuate it, right? How do, we, how do we leverage it? How do we make it come alive? And, I think what most people came down to is this idea that, well, we need resources, we need to plan, we need to work together. And working together doesn't mean everybody's agreeing, and that's hence my Motley Crew uh, comment at the outset. We're all here in the same room, but there's no way everybody here is going to, dis on, going to agree about everything, and that's just as well, because that's where the idea exchanges come from and, and the creativity comes from, the new and novel stuff comes from. But we know here in New Bedford we do things a little bit differently. If you set foot in this place, you know that it's not a cookie, cookie cutter place. And you know it's a place that, um, you know, isn't, doesn't look like, you know, any strip mall or a uh, set of strip malls or townhouses off the side of a highway. There isn't a sameness here. It's a place that is different and we are embracing that distinctiveness and that novelty in a big way by what we're announcing uh, today. Um, so uh, we had to figure out a way to like bring people together, right? So the idea was something that you know, came about a couple of years ago and we um, thought, well, why don't we, you know, create something that nobody else has created, which is an arts and culture plan, uh, arts and culture fund that would be funded directly from hotel tax receipts. Nobody in the state had done that uh, before. And so in my 2016 uh, State of the City address, we announced that we're gonna, we're gonna do this. And we got the great support of the city council and the support of the, the state legislative delegation uh, to, to make that happen. And, and that created the, the seed fund. Um, and with that, we could do some, some big things. Um, and, that's, and that's what's happening. We could bring in talent, 
um, to make that stuff happen. Um, and we could, and with that talent would come lots of ideas and lots of people getting involved in it. Um, it would be a way of activating everybody who's, you know, cares about the arts or is involved in it in some some way. And that's you guys and many more who couldn't be here today. Um, but we needed a, a plan, right? A plan to activate it. And so, um, and it's not to say it's like the sort of military plan or an operation order. You got to do this, 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 this. It's a uh, we needed a template for people to start working together because we know we all work in, you know, in an environment with limited resources. We've got when we start working together, we can we can make more with less and actually create some things that we might not have thought about in the first place. So, so that's where this planning idea came from. We had the money and we've got the talent and we've got the the, the know-how and then you guys went to work, um, and so. Uh, here we are today. We can announce today that at long last, New Bedford has its first uh, arts and culture plan right here. If you haven't read it, uh, we'll uh, make these uh, available to everybody, but this is your work. And this is something that will guide us, not to the letter, but in the, in the spirit of artistic creation and community development uh, in the years ahead. So give yourselves a round of applause, please. Um, this is a big deal. I mean, it does a, it does a lot, and it, it what what and just a, f a few things. And I think everybody should read it and really th think hard about how um, each one of us can ad advance these interests. But you know, so there are a number of things that are uh, that that I think will come out of this. First is a sort of a sense of shared purpose, right? We want to make sure that everybody that that when there are there's artistic opportunity, that uh, people are communicating across what had been silos in a, in a more effective way. And you guys have been doing that informally. This helps, I think, facilitate that, um, you know, to create uh, a opportunities for more performance art, uh, whether it's festivals or concerts or other things in, in the in public space so that people can feel like, yeah, this, this is a vibrant community. Things are happening here. Um, we're creating more cultural districts because we, in as much as we want to, you know, elevate arts, uh, in the downtown, we've got a lot of other great stuff going on in our city from north to south, and we want to make sure that that we're pulling uh, everybody into this uh, into this this uh, this artistic uh, awakening uh, of sorts in our city. Um, we want to create uh, opportunities for um, uh, for fundraising. Right? We need more resources, and so this is much this press conference, if nothing else, is a pitch to everybody out there, uh, the business community in particular, but others, uh, the foundational community, that you know, this is worthy of your investment. There are, there's enormous talent in the city, and, uh, the, but, but you know, great stuff doesn't come for free. Uh, the great mural you might see, the great concert you might hear, the, you know, the play in the park, you name it, the great exhibit at the, at the art museum, wherever, whatever it is, we need, it. so it doesn't, doesn't just happen, it happens in part because ideas meet resources. And so we, that's the, we have that mechanism now. Um, and we want more public art, uh, of course. And this really sort of gets to the point. What we're trying to create is a, a place where art is everywhere, where it's accessible, where, uh, where we embrace it. And because we are and we have to be known as a creative city. And this is, and, and it's all been sort of, a lot of it has been, not all of it, but a lot of it has been under, under the surface, what we're trying to do is bring it above the surface so that you know we are we are known as we should be as as a very artistic city but not just being known as an artistic city but a place where art enlivens um, the quality of life we're a cool place let's we want to embrace being cool but not just for cool sake but because it offers something to uh, to make our lives a little bit richer along the way um, I want, to, um, I want to thank a number of people who worked really hard on this, and there were way too many people to thank, and I'm not going to do it justice. But I do want to, uh, I want to thank the, first of all, the, uh, the, the internal team, both the city team as well as, uh, as, well as the EDC. Um, so the EDC, uh, under uh, Tony Sapienza's and, and Derek Santos's um, uh, leadership and Angela Johnson's leadership, um, made sure that this happened. It's much easier for uh, for the EDC to launch something like this and to raise money 
than it is for city government and really shouldn't be, you know, our, our feeling was it shouldn't be locked into city government, right? And it's now, there's things, some things that city government does well, but there are certain things that, you know, a quasi-public like the EDC can really uh, make happen much more faster and more fully. And so I just really want to thank your hard work, Derek and Angela, and we'll call Tony up in a, in a second for, for his victory lap, but, but, uh, but it really, what really, this really was uh, the, the right model for, uh, for activating um, our talent in our city. Uh, John Vasconcellos, uh, of course, at the Community Foundation, um, and then a number of, um, uh, always a supporter of the arts, uh, and then a number of people in, in city government. Christina Connolly, um, uh, the city's chief operating officer, as well as Ann Lauro, our, uh, his, our historic planner, uh, and Dagny Ashley, um, uh, and her team, who um, you know made sure that this is woven into all the marketing that we do, all the tourism. Because as much as we want to develop arts in the city, it is uh, it's something that we do in conjunction with uh, bringing people in. The arts are to be enjoyed by us, but also others who might visit uh, our city. Um, this, uh, I want to thank Web um, Management, who's the consultant who did this. Great work. Really, this is this is really top-notch stuff. This was this is uh, this was not done by a fly-by-night organization. For those of you who work directly with them, this is something that uh, not only took a lot of work and a lot of planning, and a lot of input, but it was facilitated by uh, just a fabulous group. Um, and uh, and then there's Margot, who. Uh, jumped right on in in every respect, both in her professional life as well as her personal life. Yeah, we blurred her back. You know that scene from Godfather 3, you know? <laughs> <they're pulled back. laughs> yes, yeah, yes, 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 that's Margot. They're pulling me, the New Bedford's pulling me back in. So, but that's, but, 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 you know, so you can take the girl out of New Bedford, but you know, you know how the, mm -hmm. what the saying goes. But she's back, uh, having brought with her you know, not bring back, she's bringing back her talent, but she's bringing back, has brought back a ton of experience uh, and, and relationships uh, from outside the city back here that, uh, to capitalize on and a perspective that is just hugely um, uh, beneficial to, will be hugely beneficial to us. And uh, I really want to thank you for your, your leadership and uh, for, uh, for really making this uh, happen, Margo. And, um, you know, you need, you need a quarterback, and that's, that's what you are on this. And, and, um, and as much as it's, you know, it is a motley crew, but that's, that's what we want. We want a motley crew, and, and you're, the, you're, the, you're the person to, uh, you know, to make sure that motley crew is, uh, is, continues to be as motley as possible. So, um, so listen, I want, I, I just, again, I want to thank you and just ask you to come on up and offer up a little bit more of the flesh on the bone uh, for, for, uh, for those of, uh, of you who aren't familiar with the plan, just so that you have a sense of like the, the next steps. And that, but most of all, I just want to say thanks for all of your hard work. It really, this will make our city a, a, a more vibrant place to live. Thanks. Come on up, Margo. Thank you. So I'm going to stand next to the podium so that everyone can see me because I will definitely I'm not tall enough to stand behind the podium. So uh, thank you, Mayor Mitchell. That was a very generous introduction. Thank you. And really, it's a true honor for me to hold this position in the city. And what makes it such a privilege is each and every one of you and the relationships that I've developed over the past year. This was a grassroots and citywide planning effort enabling New Bedford to define its future arts and cultural vision and priorities. And I'd like to acknowledge everyone who contributed to this plan, Mayor Mitchell and the City Council for creating the Arts, Culture and Tourism Fund. Without that, none of this would be possible. The 45 members of the steering committee, many of you are in the room right now, thank you. The 10 members of the internal team, including web management services, the 50 people who gave individual interviews, most of those were not on the steering committee, thank you very much, also in this room. And the scores of people who attended one of the nine public meetings. In all, an estimated 10,000 people contributed to this plan. And many did so by supplying comments via email, Facebook, one-on-one -on -one in small group meetings, and written comments on public posters. Compiling all of your input 
the future vision of arts and culture in New Bedford is your vision. In New Bedford, the creative community is an engaged and powerful partner, inspiring, inspiring social, economic, and cultural growth. In this authentic seaport city, each and every person enjoys an opportunity to experience a diversity of cultures. Art is everywhere, encouraging fun, provoking thought, and nurturing the soul. This is your achievement, and I'm honored to have the opportunity this upcoming year to begin implementing the nearly 80 major goals in it, all in partnership <laughs> with you. <laughs> um, a friend of mine recently told me, the tongue in your shoe is more honest than the tongue in your mouth. And I love that comment. And, <laughs> and my experience of this arts and culture community is that your leadership, your integrity, speaks loud and clear from the actions and example you set every day. So it's an honor for me now to introduce someone who does talk the talk and walk the walk. <laughs> the president of the New Bedford Economic Development Council and the New Bedford Whaling Museum, Tony Sapienza. Thank you, Margo. I'm gonna just take a minute to, to go back in time. It was 13 years ago that, uh, that Matt Morrissey said, we gotta get these arts people together. And we had this first meeting, and Lee, I think you'll remember it, and maybe Hank was there, and I'm not sure if Corinne was there, but Matt came out of the meeting, he said, this is gonna be like herding cats. And I can only say that to now be a motley crew is a big step up from having <laughs> been herded cats. And, and I will also comment that it is an incredibly new and, and vibrant generation of folks, from new journalists to new directors, um, that have come to this city over the last 10 or 12 years since we first started talking about arts and culture as an economic development driver for the city. And, and so I think it's just really great that we've had that kind of continuity, that kind of growth, and we've got this whole new generation of folks that are absolutely invested and committed. So congratulations to all of you and thank you all for participating because it, it, was a, you know, it wasn't so easy to get everybody on the same page. Um, there was lots of silos out there and lots of folks who, you know, had their own vested self-interest for their agency, for their, their, their artistic venue, and, and other things like that. So bringing people together and communicating has been absolutely the secret of the sauce that we are now looking at. Um, New Bedford is an arts and cultural center of southeastern Massachusetts, boasting a wide variety of attractions, diverse venues, artists, and performers, that showcase the cultural fabric of our distinctive identity and vibrancy. But it is that sense of vibrancy that can often be difficult to measure in more traditional economic development activities. That's why a strong arts and culture scene is so critical to New Bedford. We often take our cultural assets for granted or think that they don't have a big impact on our local economy, but nothing could be further from the truth. The Zyterian Performing Arts Center serves 111,000 patrons a year and can measure a $3.8 million uh, economic impact in this local economy. The Whaling Museum and the National Park routinely see more than 200,000 visitors annually that support our great downtown restaurants and retail establishments and art boutiques and, and, and stores. And dozens of events from AHA nights to the fest, Feast of the Blessed Sacrament bring in thousands more and the Buttonwood Park Zoo is visited by more than 150,000 times a year by local residents and folks from all over eastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. So it's a, it's a huge, huge economic driver that we just absolutely do take for granted sometimes. That is why we, the EDC, has been involved in the creative economy for the past 12 years. And the next 10 years look to be even more exciting and more impactful. This brings me to the placemaking program we established as the first action of our new arts and culture plan. Wicked cool places. <laughs> places are animated by elements that encourage human interaction. The goal is for great design and inspired placemaking to become infectious in New Bedford. With that, today I get to announce 12 great projects. Number one. 
Third Eye Youth Empowerment for the Third Eye Open, a free outdoor creative arts festival celebrating the vibrant energy of hip hop culture in downtown New Bedford, plus pop-up events in partnership with AHA Nights. Number two, Diana, Diana Arvinitis for the New Bedford Mobile Arts Studio. Diana, a Hatch Street artist, next door to my former employment, will transform everyday bicycle into an art-creating mobile structure which can be facilitated by guest artists, public figures, and local celebrities. Number three, Tracy Barboza for Kite Festival Workshops. Tracy, a Hatch Street artist, will work with Santos Chingo and the Guatemalan community to engage the public to create their own Guatemalan kites in four educational kite-making workshops. Number four, the Co-Creative Center for Community, a gathering at the Co-Creative Center during AHA nights. These events include a live DJ, locally crafted herbal tea, and a rotating group of local artists and entrepreneurs that encourages connection and healthy choices. Number five, Community Economic Development Center for Vacant Storefront Art Gallery. Celebrating history and heritage on a Kushnet Avenue, the CEDC will display cultural exhibits in the former Capitol Theater building celebrating the diverse cultures of people in the neighborhood. Number six, New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center for Fishtival, a fishing community celebration. Building on the past success of the Working Waterfront Festival, this new event is designed to have equal impact with a smaller footprint, taking place in and around the Fishing Heritage Center and City Pier number three. Number seven, New Bedford Port Authority for the Seaport Art Walk in collaboration with the Massachusetts Design Art and Technology Institute, UMass Dartmouth, and Bristol Community College, the Seaport Art Walk will launch its fifth year with a call for art geared towards students, working with fam faculty to learn about how to create a piece of public art. Number eight, M Mia Pinheiro for Vecinos, a, temp a temporary gallery focused on the concept of neighbors between Mexico and the United States, and specifically neighbors of Mexico City and New Bedford. Number nine, Brooke Baptiste for Reggae on West Beach, celebrating its first, fourth year. This is a series of free community events in the South End, converting the beautiful West Beach Pavilion into a dance club that is inclusive, multi-generational, and family friendly. Number 10, South Coast Lessons for Open Season Public Music Series. Jeff Angley, a Hatch Street artist, will offer a series of open group sessions in a publicly accessible location with instruments available on hand. Number 11, Superflat New Bed NB for its Artist in Residence program. Superflat NB will immerse world-renowned graffiti painter and muralist Stephen Powers in neighborhoods of the North End and the South End. His, quote, Love Letters series of murals produced all over the world include Dublin, Philadelphia, and New York City, San Paolo, and in 2019, New Bedford, Massachusetts. And number 12, the <coughs> University of Massachusetts Dartmouth for lighting installations. Professor Stephanie McGoldrick will lead students of interior architecture of architecture and design to implement the installation of lighting throughout downtown Custom House Square and Wings Court. Congratulations to all of these grant recipients. <laughs> we, we need all of the recipients to remain for a group photo, but this is the end of my remarks. Mayor, would you like to close? Yeah, Tony, well done. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I, I, can't, um, I, did, I can't thank all of you guys enough. You spent a lot of your time trying to figure this, this thing out. And these things, I mean, to you know, Tony's point about herding cats, I mean, it is, we, we get that. Uh, there's, there's some balance between pursuing your independent idea and working with other, other people. And it's, I mean, it's, a looser, right? it's a looser arrangement with, with artists, and that's just the way it is. And so, you know, when we have a group of artists in the city who are immensely talented, but at the same time they're committed to the city, and that's uh, in its growth and its long-term vitality, and that's 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 a really cool thing because so few places in America have something like that. It, it, go to other places around the country, and they would they they would 
that would die to have an arrangement like that where we have a lot of creative people who are doing their, their thing but also want to make sure that the community rises with all of them together. And uh, so I want to thank you for that and thank you for, um, for the work ahead as well. It'll be very exciting. Thanks, everybody. Bedford Cable Network, public, educational, and government access. Channel 95 is public access. Channel 9 is educational access. Channel 18 is government access. New Bedford Cable Network. We're more than you know us for. Families come in all sizes. And shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. I look up to a lot of the older heads, you know, the, the innovators, the heads of the art movements of the past. They kept it really edgy and like a lot of the Latin American muralists and Latin American artists and um, their styles are very unique and new to their time. You know, somewhat controversial, but that's who I look up to mainly. Personally, I'm very excited about going to college. It's something new and it's something different than what I'm used to. I'm definitely going to be a little out of my element, but um, that's what makes it so exciting is that, you know, it's something fresh. Well, there's so many opportunities that I think I could miss out on if I didn't go, you know? Getting into college takes planning and vision. You know, it's just like when I take a brick wall and turn it into a canvas for my art. Paintings help me realize that I've got what it takes. <laughs> 